by a subscriber, uh, Mike McKinley, on YouTube, after doing my film on colour, to do one about watercolour and colours. So I think it has to expand a little bit beyond just colour, because watercolour is quite complicated. Uh, probably one of the most complicated ways of painting there is. Uh, there are so many techniques and methods and brushes and so on, far more than we can use with the acrylics or the oils, um, although they're both very diverse. So I'm going to do that and do a foundation film now for you about watercolour to give you different ways of using it, some tips, techniques. We won't go into too much depth, it won't be too much expertise, just to give you the very basics of things um, and maybe help you understand and progress a little bit more. And the main thing is to enjoy your watercolour more and get more out of it. There's no point in my doing a completely new watercolour film. I'll use some parts from existing films as well, demonstrating ways of working and giving you examples also. Well, before we get into depth of actual painting techniques, let's just look at what materials and tools we're going to need. You see I've got a large amount of brushes here. More brushes than I've got for almost any other medium. I don't use as many for oils or acrylics. Because I think I need more brush techniques in my watercolours than I do for my acrylics or oils. My palette of watercolours here, I'll show you the main palette that I use on screen now. Then I'll show you them in more detail. And some of these colours cannot be mixed, that's the problem. You cannot make that colour there, which is cobalt violet. It's almost impossible to make the turquoise there. We've got various yellows, which I'm going to go into in discussion and how to paint. We've got transparent colours and we've got opaque colours. So it's important we understand about these colours and we're going to go into those in depth. I've already done your video about colour and about mixing. We're going to discuss how these colours will react to each other. What paints do I actually keep? Well, I keep artist quality only. Very important with watercolour that you only use artist quality watercolours. In this case we've got the SAA range which are perfectly good, a very good price for the quality of paint. Or if you prefer to go to the more well known makes, we've got the Windsor & Newton here as well. Now these are the larger tubes, the, uh, the, the, the 40 millilitre, or you might prefer the 5 millilitre, the smaller tubes. Now obviously you're going to get more for your money with the larger tubes and if you're going to do a lot of watercolouring it's worth buying the larger tubes because they'll last much longer and you get better value. So we've got the ordinary makes such as Winsor & Newton, Brownie and then we've also got the SAA makes which again very good value for money as are the pastel. Tested them all. Sponges here various different textures of sponges as well. You see the texture of this one which we're going to use for stippling and doing leaf textures and so on later on and there's various textures of sponges that you can buy off the internet or from art shops and you need to have a good selection of these as well. Then there's the magic um, rubbers, the magic wipers which are very good for lifting paint off your paper, a very fine foam. Another useful tool you notice I keep a little tube of white gouache in my selection of brushes or in my tools as well in case I want to paint in some whites afterwards. But talking about whites, I also have my SAA masking fluid, in this case in the dispenser with a very fine needle on top which we're going to discuss for doing very fine lines and work and the masking fluid in the jar as well which we've got special brushes for in here to use with the masking fluid over here. Over here you'll see I've got my special masking fluid brushes and I've also got um, a mapping pen which comes with a set of those 
for applying things as well, which can be very useful as well. So various ways of applying Martin fluid. You could even apply it with the sponges, but it's difficult to get it out of the sponges afterwards. And then all of these various brushes that I'm going to go into in more detail. Now, we've talked about the paints and tubes and how I put those out into a palette, but we also have what we call the pan sets here. Now this is a pan set of Reeves watercolours and these are full pans, they're the long blocks and you can get them in half pan shapes as well which is half a block of these. Um, they're just the same things as these ones except that these have gone hard as are those and to use these I'd have to damp the surface first as I would to use these. So whether you buy them ready made and then just buy the individual blocks to replace afterwards or as I prefer to buy the tubes and put them into my own palette, that's your own choice. But for travelling, of course, a little set like that is ideal. Just goes away into a suitcase easily. So keep all my spare paints in that little box there, which I can easily close up. And then I've got my two boxes of all my various brushes and so on, which I do tend to need. It isn't just like a fisherman with a hundred floats who only uses one favourite one. I do actually use all of these brushes for different purposes and I'm going to show each and every one being used or the types of brushes being used to discuss how that happens. And then finally, having dealt with all the brushes and the different types of things there and the different reasons for using those, we come down to the papers. And there are three basic types of paper. There's the smoothest, there's the intermediate one which is neither rough nor smooth which is called not, so it's not either. That's an easy way to remember it. And then there's a the rough which is a very, or it can be extra rough as well, it's a nice rough surface. Not only is there the different surfaces of paper, but you can get slightly different tints as well of colours, you can get creams and so on. This is a white, but you can also get different weights of paper, in other words heavier, thicker papers. This is about 140, most people use about 140 pound, it's a nice average paper to use, but I often use 300 pound as well. It's almost like using card, I won't even need stretching because it's so heavy. Right, so there's our basic set of materials and explaining just you know what we're going to require. Now let's go into go into now let's go into each one of them in depth and how we use them. Well before we start painting with the paints, let's just see what each of these colours will do and why. Um, we've got warm and cool colours in nearly every colour that you mentioned in the other video. So here we've got a very cool yellow going through to a slightly um, warmer and then warmer and then warmer and so on. Now these two yellows here, this one is lemon yellow and it is more opaque. So if I paint a little bit of this into here, you can see the more I paint, more pigment I put into that, the more opaque it becomes. Not easy to see in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is put some dark down and let the dark dry and then put the yellow over the top so you can deliberately see. I'll take some indigo, which is a very dark blue, and put that indigo in there. I'm going to let that indigo dry off. But what we're also going to notice on this is while I'm using this indigo, I'm going to thin it out. This first little bit of paint is called a wash and I'm going to use more water on it now to thin it out as it comes down and make a graduated wash so that we go from dark to light like this making it quite thin so from dark through to light is a graduated wash a bit more of that colour, put it in there you can graduate it out, gently look and I can lift out from that colour as well I take my brush and dry it out and suck out a line right through there, look. Any time I like, I can lift out any direction I want. So that's lifting out. So here we've got a coat of colour going on from dark through to lighter, simply by using more water and using the paint thinner, which is called a graduated wash. Now, this colour here, if I take some of that blue and put it into it, I can mix it with it on the paper and yellow and blue of course give me a green, so I could mix colour on the paper. But what I want to show you is how different that yellow is to this one 
that yellow is to the aureolin yellow in opacity. And I'm going to put some aureolin yellow here and at first it will look very much the same. It's quite a nice green yellow but it's a very transparent yellow. That might look very similar but when we actually come to use it painted over something else as a glaze, so this is a wash and a coat of paint over a wash when it's dry is called a glaze. We'll see how much more opaque this is than that one and this happens with quite a few of these colours. Now those are fairly cool yellow so I'm waiting for them to dry. Let's take a slightly warmer yellow which would be this chrome. And I'll paint that up here and the chrome is a fairly opaque colour. Then we can go warmer still and take some of the cadmium orange and I can go towards the browns as well. So I could go to a brown now, a more browny colour and I'm going to take some raw sienna. Now raw sienna is nice it's very like yellow ochre but it is a transparent form of yellow ochre if you like, it's more transparent. So here we've gone from warm to cooler, cooler, cooler. Now looking at these blues, let's do the same with the blues. If we take a very warm blue, we'll take some ultramarine from here, we'll place it next to this one here. That's a strong warm blue isn't it? Let's take now the next blue down which is a bit cooler, which is the cobalt blue. And there we have the cobalt blue. Then we'll go down cooler still and we'll take some ceruleum. So it goes more icy, cooler still. Then we'll go cooler still and we'll take some and we'll take some turquoise these beautiful colours we're getting and we're going from warm to cool. Now if I want to go with a warmer blue I start to go towards a purple. So I might first of all have a colour like this which is cobalt violet going upwards there. And if I mix up with a little bit of the blue I'll have a slightly warmer blue. So I'm mixing the cobalt violet with the blue to give myself a slightly more purple blue. Now I can do something called a variegated colour just now we had graduated now I'm going to take it from that ultramarine blue which is stronger here so a little bit more of the blue here and I'm going to graduate it down through into here so that it's a stronger blue here than it is here and here I'm going to graduate it into that cobalt violet lovely colour cobalt violet that we cannot make the bubble in it there so that's a graduated colour now And if we carry on going warmer, we could go towards a purple, say. Here's a nice purple. So it's not far off that one, but I'm going to make it a bit stronger. And we'll variegate it so it goes from strong to light there, look. Let's variegate it right through into the cobalt violet. So we've got a, a, a graduation of a, vari a variegated colour through graduating through from the warmer there to the cooler and eventually we come into the warmer colour so we start to come towards the cooler end of the reds here and now we're on the roses and then we come to the warmer reds gradually like this one and eventually to the very bright warm reds like this one so you see our warms and our cools right the way through and of course we can do the same with greens as well. Greens are a little bit more complicated in watercolour because not only can we mix them, we can make them by this glazing technique I was talking about. And to do that I'm deliberately going to go back to my aureolin yellow which is one of my favourite yellows and I'm going to make a band of that yellow all the way down here to, to let it dry in a moment so that I can play making greens by using glazes. So this is a wash, a thin wash of aureolin yellow all the way down here and I'm going to let that wash nice and evenly dry off. I can use a big wash brush, I'm just using one brush for this job. I'm going to discuss the brushes later. just want to discuss colours at the moment. Right, if I'm going to use a colour from my palette I'll take some I'll take some sap green, there's some sap green. I'll make that variegated so I'll go from stronger Sap green is quite warm. 
And I can cool it quite simply by taking some blue and adding it into it to make it a cooler green. So I'll, I'll variegate it by adding blue into it and making it cooler and dragging that through. Now let's look at the other end at some viridian. Viridian is a much stronger, more bluey green. So we've got more of the colour in the middle there, if you like. And the rest of our greens are going to make by mixing them. If I mix yellow with blue, I'm going to get a nice green. So let's take some aureole in yellow, deliberately, and add a little bit of my cerulean blue. And that will give me a very nice light green. I'll put that here next to it here. We've got a nice light yellowy bluey green and the more blue I add the bluer that becomes look. So that's a lovely one for leaves isn't it in the summer time and that can come right through to making it almost blue. In the same way as I could take that same aureole in yellow, take some of my turquoise which is already a bluey green and look what a lovely bright green we get with that. Now let's take a darker yellow We'll take some chrome yellow and we'll add a little bit of cobalt to that and we'll see the sort of green we get then. A much, much warmer green look. Much, much warmer green. And if we want to go warmer still, we'll take some of the raw sienna. This is raw sienna, which is something more transparent. Raw sienna. And a little bit of my Cerulean again. It would be much warmer if I used a warmer uh, blue and that's fairly warm look. If I take that same colour and add some ultramarine to it then we get a wonderfully dark warm sort of green for oak trees and things. If I add more blue to it still then we can go cooler. If I want to add more to that still if I take some burnt sienna and go really warm into that. But that's the yellow and the blue. And look at that lovely warm green we get there. So we've got the cool greens right the way through to the warms now. How to do some greens. Now this is not quite dry, but we do have over here and we talked about making darks with um, our watercolours. If I take the very deep purple here and start up here and graduate it, there's a very deep purple. Now if I thin that down and bring it down lighter, then we get a lighter colour of it. So we don't make pink by mixing white with a colour, we make pink by using it more thinly. There's the red, and if I use the red very thinly look over the white paper, we get a very light pink. But as I say, some colours we can't make like this cobalt violet which is cooler and gives us a different sort of cool pink next to it. So we make our colours lighter by either using more pigment in to make them stronger or less pigment or we make we use more water to make them thinner and the thinner the paint and the more white paper showing through the lighter the colours will look. So any of these colours have a graduated dark to light don't they? Now whilst we're still waiting for this all to dry off let's look at the browns. I only keep a couple of browns in. I keep the burnt sienna, which is a very important one, and it's beautiful when we mix it with um, the ultramarine to make a deep, a dark colour. So there's my burnt sienna. I usually keep in an Indian red as well. I keep in a burnt umber. This is the burnt umber. You see it's much richer, stronger brown. The burnt sienna is much warmer. You can see there. And this is quinquadrone gold, which is a beautiful colour, especially for painting pan tiles and things when you're adding warmth to it in, in Spain. So quinquadrone gold, it's much stronger than the uh, raw sienna. And then with this variety of colours, with all the colours I've got here, I can do nearly all I want. Obviously I can make more browns by adding red, yellow and blue, or I can tint these existing browns in. So I want to make a very dark, let me take my um, burnt sienna and I'm going to add that to a bit of ultramarine 
and that will give me a lovely dark. And the more of the ultramarine that I add, the darker it will go. And of course I can go darker than that, I could take my indigo and that will give me a very dark as well. And you see how cool that is, but if I want it to be warmer, I can add some of the burnt umber and I can make a warmer dark as well. But we very seldom need to go as dark as that in watercolour. We do like to keep the lights against the darks, but usually watercolour is a bit more transparent and we don't usually go very, very dark in watercolour, although there are exceptions and it can be done very, very beautifully. But there we are, we can see how we can make those darks, we can see how we can make greens and warm colours and cool colours now. This is dry enough now to do a more glazing. Right, there's my Oriole in Yellow wash. And if I take any blue and just put a thin glaze over it, we get green immediately. So that was the turquoise, let's take some cobalt and put that over it and we get a green simply by going over. What you are seeing here is granulation as well. If I take the ultramarine, which granulates even more, put that over, we get a very deep bluey green. So by one colour over another, we can also make a colour. We know that blue and yellow makes green when put together, but also when you put one over the other as well. But we always put the darker colour over the lighter. Very seldom the lighter over the darker. But I am going to do that deliberately now. Over here now it's just dry enough to, to work on. I'm going to take some of that lemon yellow, which is opaque. And I'm going to deliberately put it across here. You can see you can actually paint across almost like you can with oil paint. The lemon yellow is opaque and it can be used over the top just. If I tried that with the aureolin yellow, it's not going to work as easily. It just disappears into it because it's more transparent. So that's an opaque colour, which you can see over the top. It seems to have more white in it and it's got more body in it. And this is a transparent colour. Transparent colours are what we need for doing this work here more when we're putting one colour over another. So that's when it's important to know which is your transparent. If we made a mistake with our trees, we wanted to paint a bit of green or yellow over the top, then of course an opaque colour could be quite useful, couldn't it? So there we are, that gives you an idea of colours. Now red and yellow makes orange, so if I take a little bit of red and I put that over the top, then I'll get an orange glaze. And the stronger I make the paint, the brighter the orange or the brighter the red. Any colour put across. Let's take a cooler red. Put that over. Some rose over there. And you see the variety of colours we get. So that's washes, a simple coat. It's glazes, one coat over another. It's opaque colours, it's transparent colours. Then we come to watercolour techniques which actually link with this. If I take some clean water and just put it down the middle here, and I drop a lovely colour into that. Let's take, take, for instance, some purple. And I drop that in there. Look how it spreads out beautifully on its own. And we can make that work for us as well. I'm going to take some Oriole in yellow. I'm going to drop that in here and let it spread. And I'm going to drop some bright red into that. You see the effects we can get. And it will actually start to mix and make an orange. And sometimes dropping one colour into another will give us a brighter colour than by mixing them together. There's a bit of blue going into that purple. So a little bit of blue into there. See how it spreads out on its own. That's wet into wet. You can also paint wet next to wet. So if I put a yellow band down here, it's wet. And then I take some red and put that next to it, the wet will flow into the wet. Depending how wet it is as to how much it will flow in. We can also blend one colour into another as well. If that were dry, I could paint one colour next to it and blend it in. So we have wet next to wet, wet next to dry, wet into wet as our three basic techniques which we're going to discuss next. I've shown you how watercolour works by using the white paper and making the paint thinner to make it lighter or thicker, more pigment to make it darker. But we also are working from light to dark or nearly all watercolour we work from light to dark. Now there are ways we can leave white paper, I'm going to discuss those. And there are also ways we can put white paint back on afterwards. But the basis of watercolour is that we leave white behind. So let's say I had a snowdrop I wanted to paint here and I want to paint, uh, leave the snowdrop as white. I'm going to make some nice deep 
um, green. So I'll take some of that and some of my chrome yellow and I'll paint around the petals of the snowdrop like this. It comes down and round and then there's a stem coming out. As simple as that, this is just to show you how it works. There we go, and we've got petals the other side as well. We're leaving those white petals there and I'm going to paint the dark around it and I'm going to paint wet into wet. So I'm going to take some of this green that I've just made, a nice warm green, and go all the way around. The paper's resisting slightly. We've already discussed papers and you know that there's, there's a rough, a knot and a hot press. Right, there's our dark. Now, I want to go darker still, but I want to drop in some darks around that, so I'm going to make a much deeper, deeper bluey green. Add some more of that colour into that. And let's drop that in around this. And you can see that we're now leaving the white snowdrop behind. And I'm going to go much more yellow now. Start bringing up some leaf effects out from it. Let's take some nice yellows, a bit of yellow now and just come in outside here, dropping wet into wet. So you can see how we can get just a misty effect of things out of focus by dropping one colour into another. Let's try a bit of turquoise in that for fun, get a much bluer effect for some of these leaves. And I've got to let that dry off before I can put any thin washes on here to give this white plant, this white flower, any form. Let's go even darker into that, take a bit of purple, go right down into here. Let's go really dark around this bit here, imagining there are much darker leaves coming in and out of around this, this stem. So we can get this effect of wet into wet. I'm going to show you examples of this as we go on. But there we are, look. And that's left the light colour behind. All I have to do now is let that dry and I can tint into that. Equally, I could have taken a bit of um, light blue to start with. I could make a very slight wash, maybe a little bit of the pink too, and I could make those flowers already. And I'm leaving a bit of white behind here deliberately. Now I could paint around that with my dark colour, and I could let that just blend in slightly. It's not too wet, you see. I could let that just blend in slightly around there. Bring in some of those edges of those petals so we can start to get the idea of how we can paint wet into wet to get effects. And the wetter this is, the more this paint will spread into it, the drier it is, the less. Make some ready made green here, take some of that sap green, just linking it in as if it's a shadow plower below this. And we'll bring some of that green into the form bit as well. So it's like a shadow below there. Now, this is drying off, but what I want to do now is take a little bit of my cerulean blue and use it almost like a grey. Use it with a little bit of the cobalt violet just to tint these petals and make them a bit greyer. At the top there, I want that to be quite light. So I'll make that a yellow colour again and just bring that down and through. And you see how we can start to get the feeling of flowers in shadow or standing out. And the sharp, the drier this is, the sharper the edge. If we want soft edges, then we can blend one, one thing next to another with wet next to wet or wet into wet. If we want hard edges, then we need to paint wet over dry. For instance, if I come back over to here, this is now totally dry. If I take um, a, this purple and I paint across here now, look, we get a totally sharp edge unlike here, where it was a soft edge earlier. Where it's wet into wet, it's soft. Where it's wet onto dry, we get a hard, sharp edge. So I'll let that dry a moment, and I'll just show you how that works. Right, whilst it's drying, we'll just look at some more of our tools. We're going to look at each of these brushes gradually, but there's texturing as well. Just use that brush and by making a petal shape with that brush, just by placing it on the paper, we get a petal shape like that. 
you can see we can paint flowers by doing petal shapes like that. Either way around. If I were to make the masking fluid, the masking fluid is a liquid gum. If I were to put masking fluid in the same way on this paper, in those marks, it would resist this shape which means that when I let it dry and put paint on it, it would then later be removed and leave white paper. So masking fluid, we will discuss that. So that brush will make that kind of mark. It will make a long thin line. You have to know what each brush does. But there's also ways of splattering. I can take, say, a toothbrush and take some paint. Or take a deep blue. Some Prussian in this case and just put some on there and then we can splatter that so very fine splatter in this case just by what it's a very fine splatter you can see that way look or I could do a bigger splatter with a more bristly brush I could take this brush for instance take some paint on it and I could use that to go to much bigger splatters so tools that we're going to use as we go along this is just to give you an idea equally I could take some sponge and use that sponge to give me texture as well and all those various sponges I've shown you will give us various textures won't they